Good morning, everyone. Lee Chexdad here from Century 21 Canada. Happy Monday to you. Hope you have enjoyed the weekend and the days aren't blurring too much into one another right now. We are so happy to kick off our Be Relentless webinar series for a second week. And we have a very good guest today. Jared James is here. And before we get started, we, I also wanted to welcome Century 21 Canada's VP of Marketing, Chioko Kakino. She is in the office this morning. We've got lots to chat about this morning. Hello, Chioko. Hi, Lee. Thank you so much. And yes, I'm in the office, but nobody else is here. It's very quiet. And of course, I miss you, Lee. I usually see your face every single day, so I do miss you. So good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I did want to start off first uh, by thanking Lee for being our host to the Be Relentless webinar series. Uh, she's great, and uh, I just want to make sure that she's recognized. So thank you so much, Lee. Um, but we also want to thank all of the viewers out there, all everybody who has supported us through this webinar series. We're really excited to kick off week two with a very, very important speaker, Jared James. Um, and we do welcome all the people that have been joining us from other countries. So I know we have a lot of C21 family members from one of the 83 companies in which we operate in. So we're super happy to see them with us and we feel like we're a community. So we are starting week two today. Um, just before I introduce you, um, give you some background information on our speaker, I did want to wrap up last week. So hopefully most of you had joined us um, through the webinar series. We had four webinars last week. And I just wanted to share with you some of my takeaways from those webinars. So on Tuesday, of course, we had Richard Robbins. Um, he talks, uh, he talked about kind of, you know, during times of uncertainty that you need to create certainty. So he gave us some tips on creating like a meal plan, you know, when you're going to exercise every day, when you're going to call people, just bringing that routine into our daily lives, because again, we're operating differently than we ever have been. Then we moved on to Wednesday with Tracy and Anderson and uh, Carly Fulton talking about virtual open houses, um, how to use Facebook Live. So again, kind of making sure that we kind of, you know, move outside our comfort zone and try some different things using technology in order to help us meet our goals. On Thursday, Alicia Baruti from BombBomb Bomb joined us. Um, she really taught us how to think outside the real estate box, right? How to ask ourselves, you know, how can we lead the community with positivity and provide value to our clients and to the community? And then we ended the week with Sharon Smith from the Kathleen Black Group. Um, and she talked about pushing forward, being proactive, sharpening our skills, and that's what we're doing with the webinar series here, and communicating with every opportunity you can. So when everything is over, and it will be over at some point, that your business is in abundance. So in saying that, we're kicking off week two uh, with Jared James. So let me tell you a little bit about Jared. So Jared has become one of the best follows today on places like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and his popular podcast today with Jared James. Because of his no-nonsense advice, motivation, and real-world sales tips and videos, he's an in-demand speaker, and that's why we got him today, an entrepreneur and author of the book, Get Out of Your Way. His company, which is Jared James Enterprises, has become one of the most effective coaching companies around, helping thousands of students learn how to create a more um, uh, predictable businesses. And to get his message out, Jared speaks all over the world to tens of thousands of professionals every year and was even named recently as one of the top 25 most influential people in the real estate industry today. I had the privilege of seeing Jared just about five weeks ago in LA for 121. I attended his workshop. He was fantastic. He motivated all of us. Um, and one of the things that really resonated with me, and I actually, when I was texting back and forth with him, I said, you know, this really stood out to me. And he said something. He said, you need to improvise, you need to adapt, and you need to overcome. And there's nothing more important than uh, how meaningful those three words are specifically in today's world. So please join me in welcoming Jared James to talking about specific things you need to do every day during this time. Thank you, Jared, for joining us. Thank you so much. What I learned is I need a better name. Chioko, that is an amazing name. I need a better name. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, pleasure to be here. I was literally just saying to them that uh, it's been too long. I got to get back to uh, Century 21 Canada. Um, you know, I'm still connected with so many of you, message back and forth with so many of you on a regular basis. And 
Um, so it's, it's, it's a privilege. I love my C21 family and, you know, all across the globe. And it's a privilege to do this. And I really think that, you know, all trainings are important, obviously. I mean, you know, you got to sharpen the axe, you got to get better. But uh, I really feel that right now, this, the kind of uh, training that we're going to do today and the stuff that I'm going to cover today, um, you know, on the hierarchy of the importance of trainings is extremely important. So I'm going to ask for your undivided attention for the next 35 to 45 minutes. I'm going to cover a lot of stuff that is really uh, practical, informative for right now during these really unprecedented times that we find ourselves in where so many of you who don't have a problem working hard, don't have a problem hustling and doing all this kind of stuff, um, but you find yourself in a place where it's like, what should we be doing every single day? I'm, I'm not even sure, right? So let's make sure that we take lots of notes um, and that more importantly, we're actually going to do what it is that we hear because you know, hearing something doesn't, doesn't improve anything. I always say if you're starving and there's a steak in front of you, uh, that doesn't ultimately fulfill your hunger. You've got to take a bite out of the steak for it to ultimately matter, okay? I'd also love for you guys, I just put up right here up on Instagram, if you guys want to represent C21 Canada, uh, go over there. Uh, share it, give it a like, guys. Represent C21 Canada. It's, it's at, at Jared James today on uh, Instagram. Uh, I know a lot of you follow there already, but let's represent C21 Canada. Uh, if it's easier for you, you can also just go to connectwithjared.com and click on the Instagram profile there. Uh, but let's represent you guys well, okay? Uh, I am going to cover really two things right now. I'm going to start off and talk a little bit about the mentality um, that is needed during this time frame and how to keep our, our, our mindset in the right place. And then I'm going to talk about seven specific things we can be doing right now, okay, um, on a daily basis to remain productive, like I said, during these unprecedented times. And the first thing that I want to get across to you from a, a, a mental standpoint is, you know, for any of you that have followed me at all, or if you haven't, um, I talk a lot about the idea of, you know, what is it that the top 100 salespeople always have in common? And when they did this survey and this study, and they found out that the top 100 salespeople, what they've always had in common is the number one thing is their ability to control, their ability to manage their own state of mind. And what I really want you guys asking yourself right now is I say something like that, the ability to control or manage your own state of mind. The question you want to be asking yourself is, what was that for, right? Controlling your state of mind, having your state of mind, how you feel, where you're coming from, whatever, that wasn't for the good times, right? Like you don't, you don't practice marathons, whatever, for the practice. You do it for the actual marathon. And all of the stuff I've talked about for years, the mental judo, the mental voodoo, whatever you want to call it, is for right now, right? It's for the times when you ultimately need it. And it's for the times when so many other people are kind of falling off and need it themselves, but they haven't put in the work to really get there. This is when you really need to be practicing all of that mental voodoo, judo, whatever you want to call it, to keep yourself in the right state of mind and to not allow external factors to control how you feel, to not allow external factors to control how you fear, right? Uh, all that matters to me right now and all I'm focusing on is purely facts. Like what are the facts, okay? If I could make, you know, one recommendation to everybody listening right now, would you please stop watching the news 24 seven, please, okay? I am not saying the news is bad. I am not saying, I'm saying that it's not there to make you feel better, okay? The news is there to get ratings and you don't get ratings if you're not sensationalizing everything, okay? So let's just take a step back and realize that it is not healthy for us. It is not healthy for the people around us. It is not healthy for our businesses. It is not healthy for any of this stuff for us to be watching the news 24 seven. They are not there to make you feel good, okay? So let's stay positive, but let's stay realistic. You know, I've seen the, the, the various sides where, you know, one side is a doctor, like they just, everyone acts like they're a doctor and they've got a friend who knows what's coming down the road. And the other side basically ignores that this is even important. It's just a hoax. It's just a, you know, whatever. We need to stay realistic, but positive. Okay, realistic, understanding what's going on right now, but positive and also understanding that what we're going through right now is temporary. Please understand that this is 100 percent temporary. It is not long term. And what you can't as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a, whatever you want to call yourself, as a leader in the community, 
You cannot allow a permanent mindset to set up shop in this mind that is so important to everything you do. You cannot allow a permanent mindset to show up for something that is so temporary. And I promise you, this is temporary right now. You know, sometimes I was telling a group the other day, uh, you have to really kind of view your life or view what you're in at the moment, um, almost like a, a, video, a video editing app or a video editing software on your computer, where when you're, when you're editing a piece of video and you download that file in, you know, the file in the video editing software might be about this long, right? And then there's this little thing with a scroll where you can move it back and forth. And if you want to elongate it, you can all of a sudden make that one file that was this big, you can stretch it out and make it three pages long, right? If you want to get more detailed in an exact moment. And what you realize and what I've come to realize is that sometimes we have to step back and view what we're in almost like a video editing app where what we're in might seem so permanent and it might seem so huge and it might seem so, but if you just kind of move that scroll and you start to see it now pages out, you realize how small that little time is in the scope of everything, okay? And we have to remind ourselves of that right now. This is big, it's important, we don't wanna downplay it, but we'll tell stories about this, we'll bounce back. This is absolutely a temporary thing, okay? So let's remind ourselves that, let's focus on facts, let's not just be fear-ridden in everything that's going on, and let's make sure that we make it a point that this thing right here, we keep it where it needs to be because otherwise everything I'm going to talk about on here and everything that you're going to hear eventually isn't going to mean a thing because you're going to be operating at a, a place of fear, which is not where you want to be. It's not what leaders do. You know, I just posted on, I think it was on Instagram yesterday. And I said, guys, this is literally when leaders lead. This is when leaders are needed. Okay. And you've got to make the decision in your life. What are you in your local community? Are you a leader or are you a follower? Okay. Are you somebody who, who goes with the flow? Or are you somebody who ultimately leads and lets pe and makes people feel better um, and gives them the positive outlook on things? Like, which one are you? Okay. So with that being said, guys, let's get right into this. Okay. I want you guys taking notes. We're going to talk about seven specific things you could be doing right now or that you need to do right now. Um, because from a mentality standpoint, look, when I'm talking about not allowing a, a permanent mindset to set up shop in your mind here for something so temporary. There are plenty of things right now uh, that are that are that are worth looking forward to. That are opportunities right now. You know, look at look at the number of people that are working from home right now. Like I've already been looking at retail stores the last few years and going, wow, these aren't going to last. Like, who would have thought you could have gone to the you know a mall during Christmas time? but you could last year because Amazon exists now and not everybody's going there, right? But I used to think that all of those retail places were gonna get, you know, uh, uh, once they went out of business, that they were gonna get replaced with commercial buildings for places like this where employees work and such. And now with the number of people that are working from home, many CEOs and other people are now going to kind of adjust their way of thinking and say, hey, you know what? I wasn't for that work from home, but I don't think I need to pay 12 grand a month in a lease anymore for a commercial building let's operate virtually, right? So that's gonna bring up opportunities because those retail spaces that were going to get filled by commercial spaces are now gonna get used for something else. And most likely that's going to be residential, that's going to be apartment buildings, that's going to be condos, that's going to be these types of things because the one thing that's not going down right now is the population, especially right now with everybody home. Pretty soon we're gonna have the corona boom about nine or 10 months from now. Uh, that will come from this, okay? So there are opportunities. You wanna understand how money works. You know, when you look at the global economy and the global markets like crashing right now, you gotta understand that money isn't just spent and it goes away. Money does nothing more than move around. So, so if, if uh, C21 Canada or someone else hires me to come and do an event or do a tour, they pay me a certain amount of money, but then I'm gonna take that money and I'm going to pay my staff and I'm going to move that money and get flights on Delta. I'm gonna, the money just moves around. And so understanding that, you wanna know that whenever, uh, when you see global markets start to crash, it's because people are pulling their money out, okay? But when they pull their money out because of the way money works, it has to go somewhere. How many of these people who took their money out of markets and other things are now gonna be looking up and going, 
you know what doesn't drop 20% in a day? Real estate. Maybe I should move my investment over to there. Okay. So when you look at everything going on right now, there are absolute opportunities, not to mention with the number of agents and such that are going to drop off right now. Uh, and you're not going to be losing listings to somebody's grandkid anymore who had their license on the side, because ultimately the strong are the ones who are going to make it through this. And that's a good thing for our industry. Okay. So with that being said, guys, let's talk about seven specific things you could be focused on, seven specific opportunities. Let's take some notes. Number one, what needs to happen right now is from an agent perspective, a broker perspective, you need to shift your mindset from that of a salesperson, that of a sales mentality, um, and you need to shift your mindset to that of a service mentality in the short term. Okay. It is not about sales right now. I cannot stress this enough. I have heard big name coaches and speakers and everything else right now teaching people how to take advantage of the times we're in and how to get a hold of people whose properties have expired or, you know, they were trying to sell by themselves, or they're trying to whatever, and how to create sales out of this. Do you know how freaking tone deaf that is right now? Okay. This is not the time. Right now is when you need to shift. And guys, I'm the sales guy. Like I'm sales 101. I'm all, I don't think people think about sales enough. I think people are afraid of sounding salesy and that that's why a lot of them are broke is they really don't even know how to do sales. I'm all for sales. I'm telling you that at this moment right now, in the very short term, you need to shift your mentality from that of a salesperson uh, to that of a, of a service minded mentality. Okay. That's all that matters right now. And what that means is, is that right now, there is an absolute opportunity when it comes to your database, okay? The number one source of business through all of these years, the lowest part of the funnel, the whatever, is still your database. The reason why so many of you have not been able to capitalize on it is because we've done a terrible job with our database, okay? We teach our students, and I won't go into details on these. Uh, you can get, there's a video on YouTube that goes into detail on these. If you look at Jared James, five steps for SOI, you can go get all the details on this. But we teach all of our students the five-step follow-up to ultimately uh, create more value and to keep those relationships alive with your database, with your SOI, with leads, with, you know, whatever. Because they did a study and they found that the average lifetime value of a client is not the three, four, five, six, eight, ten thousand dollars uh, that you make. At that moment, it's $117,000 if that person would just keep using you over and over again. The problem is, is that many times we're best friends with people for three to six months when they buy and sell, and then we forget about them and we don't follow up. So we teach people the five steps are number one, you never leave a conversation without creating uh, expectation for what the next contact's gonna be. Number two, you execute on that expectation, meaning you call, you do whatever, when you say you were going to. Number three, once you execute and you're talking to them again, you create a new expectation for what the next touch is gonna be. Number four, you ask for the business. Very simply, something like, hey, you know, I promised my family I was gonna help 50 other families this year. Uh, uh, so I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask. Is there anybody I should be talking to? That's asking for the business. And number five, you close with the new expectation you created. Um, this isn't a training on those five, so don't worry if you understand them yet. Just go to YouTube, type in Jared James, five-step follow-up ROI, I mean, SOI, and you'll see it there, right? My point is, is that we have an opportunity right now with our database to literally take a defibrillator, walk over to our database, and clear, boof, reset that database, okay? Because the reason why a lot of you have lost touch and haven't remained in touch is because you don't know what to say. And it's been so long, it would be awkward, it would be whatever. And yet we have an opportunity right now that it, you're not calling them for sales. It's just a check-in for how are you doing. Right now, we need to scale the unscalable. Unlike what I usually do, which is teach people how to do scalable things, run a business, the whole thing. I'm telling you right now is the time while you're working from home and you've got all this time to scale the unscalable. And that means that you either reach out one by one to every single person in your database, or I did a training on, uh, on CRMs and, and, and systems and processes last week, which is also on YouTube, where I talked about how, uh, what you should actually, how to do a mass text to people. And you should right now be doing a mass text to your database that literally says nothing more than how are you? Is there anything I can do to help? Okay. 
we did this training and I said that one thing where I'm like, guys, mass text right now. How are you? Is there anything I can do to help, right? You can do that through your CRM. You can do that through apps like Reach. You can do that through a lot of different places. Uh, you know how many messages I got? How many people posted in our, our Jared James coaching group on Facebook and said, oh my God, I did that one thing and I got hundreds of responses from people I haven't talked to in years. They're like, I'm having conversations with people I haven't talked to in years. You have an amazing opportunity right now to revive, to reset your database with all those people who you lost touch with just by reaching out, being a human being right now, shifting your mindset from a sales mentality to a service mentality and saying the simple words of, how are you? Is there anything I can do right now? How's the family? How's the service mentality? It's one of the number one opportunities that we have as a result of what's happening right now. The second thing that we need to be doing right now, number one is shift your mindset from sales to service. The second thing we need to do is we need to make efforts right now uh, to be visible leaders in our marketplace. I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean, okay? Visible leaders in our marketplace where we are seen, not trying to sell, we're visible, okay? How long have I been teaching you guys that visibility trumps ability, okay? Being visible is way more powerful than being the best because you have to be an option. Visibility trumps ability. You have an amazing ability right now with everybody watching online. The eyeballs are there. People are you know, looking for things to watch other than the news. You have an amazing ability to do that. So let me give you a couple of examples of what you could do and of what some of our people are already doing, okay? So let me just share this real quick. Uh, you guys should be able to see it in one second. If it doesn't show up, I'm sure one of the people on here will let me know. Uh, but let's go over, for example, that's Instagram. Let's go to Facebook. Let me give you guys a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go into our group. Uh, you guys can join this if you want. It's free. You can see examples of what I'm about to talk about. Okay. So you can see exactly what it is you should be doing. And let me pull up a couple of examples here. Okay, here we go. So one of the things you need to be doing right now from a service perspective is every single one of you needs to be creating Facebook groups solely around the idea of, of uh, setting up a place where people can see locally what food is available to go, who's doing takeout, what are the menus, what are the hours, who's closed, who's not. You literally just go here, click create, create group. That's simple, okay? Here's some examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, one of our coaches created a, uh, a group and it was called Riverside Area Food to Go While in Lockdown, okay? Here's another one. One of our students, Ben Meyer, created a group very similar. It's a group very specific. It's going to say your area name and you can call it whatever you want. Area name, food to go while quarantined, food to go while on lockdown, whatever it is, okay? You're going to create this group. You're going to reach out to the owners of these restaurants find out if they're open, find out if their menu has changed at all, get a copy of that, find out what their hours are, find out if they're running any specials, and you are going to create a group in your area and start inviting in your friends there. You're going to allow those restaurant owners to invite in their people. You're going to invite people from the community to have one place that they can go to, and in that place, they're going to be able to go see what food is available to go? What are the hours? What are the menus? Are they running any specials today? One place they can do it. And because you're the one creating it, you're going to be the source, which means everybody sees you. Visibility trumps ability, sees you being a leader in the marketplace, uh, sees that you're doing good and trying to help in the community. This is one of our students that did this. And literally within two days, he had over 11,000 people from his local community in his group. And he now fast forwarded today. Uh, almost a week later, has almost 28,000 people locally in his area that saw that he set this up, that are visiting it on a regular basis, and he is doing this as a service to his community. Another one you can do, here's an example of what one of our coaches did here. They created a local group, and they created a group, since so many people right now are losing jobs or looking for jobs, they created a group where the local businesses can post available jobs they have, Local people can post what they're looking for or apply for those jobs. And literally all he did was create a group, call it, this one was East Tennessee now hiring. And this was back a week ago, had over 14,200 people join, okay? This is something every single one of you can do 
but it's an example of something that's available to you. It's free, but it's about you being a visible leader in your marketplace coming from a service first mentality where you're just trying to put the one place where you are, you know, the source that's creating it, but the one place where the things that people are looking for locally right now, here's the one place they can go find it. Okay. And remember visibility trumps ability. When this is all over and the surge comes, they're going to remember you. They're going to connect with you on Facebook. They're going to, and you're going to be the source of it, but you're coming from a place of service. Okay. So that's number two. Number three, here's the third thing we can do. And by the way, guys, like I said, if you want to see examples of that uh, and you want to ask questions, how do I do it? You know, should I make it public or private? Like, what did you guys do to get more people in? You can go type into Facebook, Jared James Coaching, join that group. It's free. There's nothing allowed in that group other than networking, masterminding, casting of referrals, everything but spam. We're there to help, okay? So make sure you do that. Number three, the third thing we need to be doing right now is we need to prepare for the surge, okay? I'm gonna say that again. We need to prepare for the surge. And believe me, the surge is coming. Everything we saw prior to this lockdown, prior to this quarantine, prior to whatever you want to call it, was record numbers for the spring, okay? And so all of these people that stopped are going to come back out right now, but you need to be prepared for it. So what does that mean? That means that we right now, one of the things that's happened in the economy is that the economy has been exposed and it's now become a tech first enabled economy. What it means is that a lot of you that were running businesses that were not tech first and you were getting away with it because it didn't matter as much and it's the way you've always done it, that has been exposed now. And those that do not get their business and take this time right now to set up the right technology so that you are the best option for the consumer are ultimately going to pay the price. Can you imagine 007, right? James Bond was supposed to just come out this month, but they just had to back it off to November because this whole thing changed how people are going to view the movie. They can't go to the theater. If they had been more progressive and had done what so many studios and other places are doing right now and released that on Netflix or released it on Amazon Prime, not only would they not have taken this movie that cost them hundreds of millions of dollars and had to back it way off, they probably would have had four, four times the ticket sales because everybody's at home and would have been buying it and watching it. But now they're paying the price for not being a modern business in today's world. You have to look at that and you've got to start to look at, okay, this is an opportunity right now. When the surge comes, I'm either gonna be ready or I'm not. When the sun comes out and they say businesses are back open, I'm either gonna be ready or I'm not, which means you have a chance right now, an opportunity to actually take that CRM, that thing so many of you pay for but don't actually do anything with, and actually get the systems and the processes and those things actually set up and not make excuses anymore about I'll do it when I have time and I'll do it whatever. Now you have time to do the boring stuff that you've been avoiding. Now is the time to do that. I literally just did a training. It's up on, uh, on my YouTube channel. It's 100% free. You can either go to YouTube or go to connectwithjared.com and click on YouTube. I did a free training on no matter what CRM you're using, uh, a training on getting your CRM set up and getting your systems and processes set up, now is the time. Because ultimately, here's what we know. When people ask me what's the number one mistake that agents make in this industry, it's very simple to me. It's that agents and brokers don't understand that ultimately it's boats before fishing. Let me explain what I mean by that. Everyone wants to fish. Everyone wants to know how to create more leads. That's what everybody wants to know. And it's the wrong order, okay? Ultimately, it's about boats before fishing. If you go out and try to catch a ton of fish, but you don't have the boat to pull those fish on, it's a wasted opportunity. You don't go shark fishing with a canoe, okay? And so when you look at people in our industry, they try to create all this business, create all these leads, and they don't have the infrastructure and the processes set up which are supposed to come first, boats before fishing. This is your opportunity to set up your infrastructure, your processes, your CRM, your, this is your chance to do it. It reminds me of what I call the 1%, 99% rule. 
Let me explain to you what the 1%, 99% rule is. I believe that the thing that most people are known for is actually less than 1% of their life, okay? And let me explain to you what I mean. If I go on the road or I go do one of your events or I go do whatever and, and people see me, they're like, oh, there's Jared, the speaker, the trainer, the, and they, that's what they title me at. That's what they see me as. I spend less than 1% of my life on a stage. I spend more time as a daddy than I do a trainer. And yet when people see me, they're like, there's the speaker, the trainer, the whatever. It's less than 1% of my life. But what makes me worthy of that 1% title that so many of you give me is the 99% of stuff that happens behind the scenes that you never see. The boring, non-sexy, not Instagram worthy, not whatever, the boring behind the scenes crap, the 99% of what I actually do from a systematic process stamp, whatever, is uh, you know, looking up content, you know, figuring it, is ultimately what makes me worthy of that 1% title that you give me, right? And you're no different. You want to be known as a top producer in your area. You want to be known as a top team. You want to be known as a, I promise you that even if you are, less than 1% of your life will be spent at a closing table. And yet that's what you're known for. But what makes you worthy of that and what's going to carry that on is the 99% of boring behind the scenes crap that nobody sees that makes you worthy of that 1% title. And I'm telling you right now, we have an opportunity to narrow in and zero in on that 99% right now and get our systems and processes and CRM and all of this kind of stuff so that when the surge comes and it is coming, you are ready for it. While everybody else is getting out of shape and not, you know, in my country, the NBA suspended the National Basketball Association and they're trying to restart the season in the summer. But I'm telling you what's gonna happen. A lot of those top teams, they're gonna come back right before the playoffs. A lot of those teams aren't gonna be as good. And you know why? Because their, their main players, rather than staying in shape during this time and preparing for when they come back, are sitting on the couch gaming. They're sitting on the couch playing games all day, and they're not going to be ready. And you have to ask yourself right now that when this surge comes and the sun comes back out and they open business back up for normal, did you sit on the couch the whole time or did you prepare your business for the surge? Did you put in the systems and processes to be able to handle more than you ever have before? That's going to be the question that you wish that you had answered correctly when that time comes. Number four, the fourth thing we need to be doing right now is we need to be creating content like never before, okay? Like, you know that camera you bought, that lighting you bought so that you could create, but you never actually used? Now is the time. If you watch what I'm doing from, a, from an Instagram perspective, from a Facebook perspective, from a Snap, like all of these places, YouTube, I am putting more content out than ever right now. Do you know why? There's a couple of reasons. Number one, people want a break from the news. They want a break from the constant worst thing. This is surging. This is, you know, whatever. They want a break and you need to give them an outlet for their eyeballs to focus on somebody else. Because I'm telling you right now, here's what's happening. In this moment right now, brands are going to be made. Your brand will, the, its growth will be expedited by what you do right now because there's so much attention on people's phones and on the internet and on the, if you will step up and you will plant your flag in the ground and say, this is my community and you're the one that daily is giving information about the community and updating people on what things actually mean and giving them where the opportunities are, you will become the person that they start to follow as a leader in the industry. Because right now, just like in the old days when they were claiming countries, we are planting flags in the ground right now and ultimately determining this is my community or someone else is gonna do it and you're just gonna work in their community. I'm doing the same thing right now in the coaching training space. We're gaining people, followers like crazy and everything because I'm understanding what the opportunity is right now to put your flag in the ground and say, this is my area, okay? So you want to be doing content. You want to be interviewing the local, you know, whatever you call them, principals, superintendents, teachers, whatever you want to call them, the local leaders, you need to be interviewing them and using their content and updating your area on what's happening. So again, you are the source. Brands are being made right now if you're smart about it. You should have a page on your site 
because so many so many banks are giving uh, relief for their mortgages and giving you know uh, relief for these things. You need a page on your site that lists all the major banks that people use in your area with a link to what their process is uh, uh, for any kind of relief so that you can be doing videos and saying, hey guys, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but there is relief. Go to my site at blank, blank, blank .com forward slash relief. I've got a list of all the banks. Click on it. Be a resource. Come from a place of service. That is how right now you are going to draw eyeballs. You are going to plant your flag in the ground. You are going to build your brand right now. You're going to establish yourself as a leader during this time that the world needs leaders. And you're either going to be one or you're not. And you're ultimately right now going to figure out who the people are in your area that simply like to read Instagram quotes and who they are that during this time when it's needed actually live those same Instagram quotes. You've got to decide which one you are. Number five. Number five is one that um, you guys are probably going to ignore and you're not going to like. But this is the time right now, number five, you need to take this opportunity to wake up and get physically fit. Okay. And you're like, what? What's that have to do with anything? Number one, uh, you work in an industry that is extremely stressful. Now, when you look at these viruses and other things, they go after people whose immune systems um, are compromised. Do you know what compromises an immune system? Stress. Like almost nothing compromises it more than stress, right? Now, are you guys stressed in this industry? Like even, even the successful ones listening, it can be a roller coaster, okay? And so you need to take this opportunity to lead. Not only, and I'm not saying anyone here has to look like a Baywatch model. Like there are people watching right now that are overweight, that are in better shape than thin people. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding the role that stress and exercise and all these things play in your life and how it is needed for you. You know, I do this, uh, a lot of you follow me online and you know that I do the hashtag, did you sweat today? And I do it every day. I either go for a run or I go to the gym or I go and every day I give my body an opportunity to sweat and really to, to release, right? To, to have a stress relief, have a, so that, but here's why. I've joked around for years and I've said to people that I do this because I've got two boys and I wanna still be able to dominate them when they're in high school. And that's true. It's funny, but it's true, right? I do it because I want to give them an example and show them that, you know, just like showering isn't optional, neither is taking care of yourself. It's not optional. It's not, it's not easy, but it's not optional. But you know the real reason I do it? I did it because years ago I had a dream. Like, I don't think we understand how much disease comes from things that were completely avoidable uh, if we had just, you know, had a stress relief and taken care of ourselves and eaten right. And, and I had this dream that I got this disease that was completely avoidable, but I got it because I was too stressed and not taking care of myself. And at that moment in the dream, I would have done anything to go back in time and get rid of it. Like, I'll give you, give you my left arm, like just make this go away. But I couldn't, it was too late, you know, like, like it is with health sometimes. And then I woke up from this dream, which really was more like a nightmare. And I realized that it was a dream. And then I did have a chance. And I made a decision that day that I was going to live the rest of my life like I would have before the diagnosis, okay? I would do things to prevent before the diagnosis, and that's why I do it, okay? And so I would encourage a lot of you right now, take this time as your home to start walking, to start exercising, to start doing, you know, the internet 20 to 30 minute, you know, workouts that are on there, to start eating a little bit better, to start giving yourself a stress relief because it matters so much more than just your weight or any of those things. You need to live like you would before the preventable diagnosis. And you need to give that example to those around you. And you need to keep your immune system strong. And you need to keep your energy up because all those things matter for business. That's number five. Number six. Number six, we need to think different right now. Like, like I told you, the world is in a place right now where it needs leaders. And that means that not that we're not smart. We don't pay attention to stuff. We're not smart. We don't keep our hands clean. We don't, you know, like we need to be smart. But you also need to... Stop acting like a pawn. You know, I put this on Instagram the other day and I said, you know, the world is a game of chess and you have a lot of people right now acting like pawns that want to rule like kings and queens. And it's just true. You're seeing it right now. Okay. Like you should not be dictated to how you think and how you operate in your business and how you feel you're, you know, whether you're scared or not by what the media is saying or by what, you know, your, your colleague says, or you need to be a leader which means right now, I mean, my God, when this all started happening, 
I started looking at opportunities when everybody's running out of the market and whatever, I started investing in the market like crazy. Like Warren Buffett says, when other buy, when others buy, you sell, when others sell, you buy. Like I started investing like crazy because I know that it's coming back. Right. I started looking at like, you know, any flights that I have the next 12 months, I'm booking them now. Right. Well, everybody's like, I can't fly. I can't, I'm booking them now. They're like a third of the price. They're like a quarter of the price right now because everybody's freaking out. This is temporary. Leaders need to lead and leaders think differently. Leaders swim the other direction when other people are swimming in a certain direction, right? For a lot of you that are coming to, you know, we do a yearly event called the, the Jared James Advance. For a lot of you coming to the 2020 Jared James Advance in Nashville in October, book your flights now. Like they're a third or a quarter of the cost that they were three weeks ago. Okay. So think different leaders lead. We need leaders right now. So number six is think different. Don't allow others to tell you how you should feel or tell you what you should believe or tell you, you know, whatever it is. Like we got to be smart, but we also got to be leaders and look at where the opportunities are and take advantage of those opportunities. Number seven, number seven. And the last one I'll say, so number one, guys, was we need to shift our mindset from a sales mentality to a service mentality. Number two was we need to be a visible. Uh, and number one, by the way, for that one, we need to be reaching out to our database. It's an opportunity to reset. Number two is be a visible leader in your marketplace. Um, and, and I gave you some examples of different groups you can create to kind of be the source and bring everybody together for where those opportunities are. Number three was prepare for the surge. The surge is coming, okay? And it was that 1%, 99% rule, boats over fishing, get your CRM set up, get your systems and processes in place now. Number four is create content like never before. There is a land grab right now. You need to be putting your flag in the ground saying, I am the local community leader here, and I'm the one that's gonna educate and make people feel better and let them know what's going on. Number five was use this as a wake up call to get physically fit. Number six was think different. Leaders lead and we need leaders right now. And number seven, this one is going to sound a little corny, but for those of you that know me, you know that I'm not a cornball person on any level, okay? But, but here's what I also know that you need to understand, okay? You, if you're watching me right now, if you feel unsure about yourself right now, if you feel uneasy, if you feel whatever, I need you to know from me to you that you're not only enough for this situation, you were born enough for this situation. And let me explain to you what I mean. A lot of us feel inadequate. We feel you know, uncertain about the times that we're in right now. But I want to tell you that before this situation came about, you made the decision to join an industry, to join a profession that doesn't guarantee you a salary, that doesn't guarantee you a lot of things that a lot of people enjoy, and yet you made that decision and said, I'm going to bet on myself. Like I can do this, right? If that's you, you were born enough for this situation. Like you were, you were born for such a time as this. This is when winners are going to win. I, I was watching as, as again, as corny as this sounds, the other night I was watching with my, uh, is what made me think about this. I was watching with my family. I was watching American Idol. And I'm watching American Idol because it's one of the few things we can still watch. And I don't have to worry about a sex scene breaking out with my children there. So I'm watching American Idol. And um, this one kid has so much talent, it's ridiculous. And he is, he's just sabotaging it though, because he's so talented. Like if I had his talent, I'd already be touring the world in arenas and everything. But he's so unsure of himself. He's so, he's so just, just lacks confidence. He's so, he's just sabotaging his chance. Cause every time he's getting up, he's just doing terrible and he's freaking out and he's sweating like crazy. And he gets up to do his thing and he doesn't do a great job, even though he's so talented and Lionel Richie of all people, you didn't think I'd be bringing him up. Did you Lionel Richie gets up and he, and he says to the kid before he gets off the stage and he goes, you need to understand something. He's like, you know, you're more talented than all three of us judges down here. And you're going to sabotage what you should be because of your lack of confidence. And he's like, and I need you to know you were born enough. Like you were born with the talents, the skills, the everything you needed to be on this stage and dominate as long as you don't sabotage it. And my message to you guys that made me think of you guys is if you had the gall to get into this industry, commission only, 
and bet on yourself. You have every talent you need. You have every skill you need. You were born enough. And it's a spit in the face to the talents that you have to not wake up and recognize that. No different than when, you know, I get up on a stage and I'm about to talk to 5,000 people or something. And, you know, there's one side of me that always remembers, oh, you're the poor kid from a broken home. You know, why would they be listening to you? But then on the other side, I'm also pulling 100% from the idea that I'm in my lane right now. Like, I understand this stuff. I have put in the work. I am gifted to do this. I am, and I'm pulling from these sides at that moment. And I remind myself on a regular basis, no matter how corny it is, that I'm not just enough. I'm, I was born enough. Like, I was made for this. And some of you right now need to understand that while this is tough right now and things are uncertain, it's unprecedented, everybody's playing on the same board right now. Everybody's playing the same game meaning just as difficult as it is for you and just as much as you don't know like what to expect, every person in your area is playing the exact same game and they have no advantage over you, they have no anything and somebody is going to win. And you have to remind yourself that when this all settles, someone's gonna win and it should be you because you're not only enough, you were born enough, you were made for this, you were made for this time. And while others cower right now in the corner, and wait for everything to pass, others are, are building their brand right now. And they are gonna come out stronger than ever because they were intentional with what they did every single day, rather than just sitting back like a follower and going, what's gonna happen? You were born enough, okay? So guys, that's my message to you. You guys can jump back on here. If any of you have questions, I mentioned it a couple of times, uh, you can just go to connectwithjared.com. You can DM me, direct message me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, you know, whatever place you want to do it. Uh, any question you ask, I will personally respond. Uh, so go ahead and do that, guys. I hope that's helpful. Uh, seven points, practical, something you can do. Um, pleasure, pleasure speaking with you guys. Thank you very much, Jared. We really appreciate it. We have had some questions come in in the last 45 minutes or so that while we have you, we might as well ask them. Um, is there anything people can do when they're sending out messages to their network to not make it sound a little bit weird? No, I don't know. You know, if you haven't reached out to someone in a while and you're sending a big message out to your network saying, how can I help? We had someone say, it might seem a bit strange and that my ulterior motive will always be sales. How do you find the happy medium there? Okay, so two things. Number one, um, someone who feels like sending a message during a time of crisis like this and saying, how are you? And feels like the person knows that they have a motive for sales. That sounds like it's about them. Because uh, I'm going to tell you right now that I got a message from somebody personally that I had not heard from for years that, that services something for me financially and everything else and literally wrote me exactly what I just said to you guys, which was, how are you? Is there anything I can do to help? Didn't say anything about sales, didn't say anything about whatever. I didn't for one moment make it about sales with that person. I appreciated that they reached out. I reached back out and said, man, we're good. How's your family doing? At no point during that interaction, did that person say to me, so are you thinking about getting into whatever? Like, it's about your motive. If your motive is truly from a position of sales, don't hold off on doing something because you think someone might think this or might think that, you know, they might think you don't care about them if you never reach out. Okay. So as long as your motive is correct, your actions will follow that. Do not at any point bring up sales during that conversation. How are you? Is there anything I can do? is not a salesy routine. And by the way, I'm not just saying that. Thousands of our students have done it, like are doing it right now with their database and with their people, thousands of them. And not one of them has had a response from one of their clients going, oh, what's the motive here? Or what are you up to? It's a place of service, guys. You have an opportunity right now. If you did that during a regular time, I could see why that would be the case. You do it during right now, this is a time when it's normal to be saying, how are you? It's normal to be, it's a time of crisis for so many people. So don't allow your own, whatever's going on in your head or, or wondering whether they'll think that to keep you from acting, go give it a shot. Great. We had another question from someone about ideas for great content. And I know you touched on that already, talking about uh, the list of restaurants and who's offering takeout. I want that in my community. Is there anything else you've seen 
in, in volunteer to go out and get someone something at the store because of the restrictions in their local community. Have you seen any other things that you have thought were really fantastic in your in your uh, uh, guide online? Yeah, yeah. So, so a couple things. And again, if you if you go in our group, there's like a list of them. Like people, agents have been posting from all over the world. You know what people are doing? They're doing coloring contests with the kids. Uh, uh, they're doing. They're building masks. They're like yarning and creating masks for people who need it. They're offering to help some of the people that are more elderly to go drop off at their door, help them out with those kind of things. But to your first question about ideas for content, okay? Content first off, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Content is everywhere right now. If you open your eyes, just look at whatever the media is feeding for fear. That's an opportunity for content, okay? What it actually means, what, you know, what's, what, what's the truth about this? There's a difference between facts and truth, okay? And what you need to get out in your marketplace is truth. Here's what I mean by that. We've had a lot in the States right now. Um, all they're promoting, the media and everything, is basically, you know, like two days ago. There's been a surge in people with the coronavirus, okay? Now, factually, sure, we went from this number to that number to that number. It's a surge. The truth is, it's not a surge. They all had the coronavirus the whole time. We're just finally testing people. We didn't have tests to give them. So they had it the whole time. It's just that we're finally able to test them and see that they actually have it. It's an opportunity to talk about with people what's going on, what really happened, you know, make them feel better about it. Guys, it's not surging right now. We're just getting more tests. Content also comes from, look at what your clients are sending you. Look at what's coming up in the national media about whether it's mortgage rates or about what's going on with housing or about you know uh, how many have stopped, whether people are doing showings now or not. That's all content. Content also should not just come from you. When I talked about you know actually going and talking to local leaders in your marketplace, doing Zoom videos, right? Uh, you can get a free account through Zoom, doing Zoom videos and others, and talking to local leaders, talking to the people who run your town, talking to the people who run your school systems, talking to actual teachers about how it's going with e-learning and talking. That's all content that doesn't even have to be leveraged by you. You know, a great example of that right now is I am on, um, what day? Wednesday, I think. No, Tuesday. Is today Monday? Has anybody else lost track of days since they stopped like going into the office every day? So yes. I am, I think everybody's losing track of days and becoming alcoholics right now. So I am tomorrow, Tuesday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern going to have on my Facebook Live, Mike Meadler, the CEO of, of, of Century 21 International, right? And I'm doing every day of the week for the next two weeks, I'm doing happy hours on my Facebook Live where I am interviewing the CEOs of the major brands across the globe. And so I'm putting this content out, but really I'm leveraging them because I'm talking to them and saying, what are you guys seeing? What are you guys, what are you? And so it's an example of exactly what I'm telling you to do, where you're leveraging other people for content so that you're able to have videos that are coming out almost daily and giving people a break from the news. All of your content doesn't have to come from you creating it from you talking about rates, you talking about what's gonna happen once this ends, you talking about whether people are doing showings or not right now, you talk, doesn't just have to be that. Take the people in your area that are considered leaders, you're probably not gonna take the CEO of Century 21, it wouldn't matter to your people. My audience is you guys, so it matters to you. But what does matter? What's going on in the community? So start doing interviews with those local community people and have them talk about what's going on and what's coming up and what they're looking for. That's all content. It doesn't have to be you staring at a camera and coming up with everything. Leverage other people to create content. Great advice as always, Jared. We thank you so much. For some people who joined us partway through, please remember you can always watch this back on our Facebook channel. You can always go to our YouTube channel as well. We are posting these every afternoon. You can watch any of the presentations that you haven't seen yet. And we are only just getting started. We have Chris Leader joining us tomorrow. Same place, same channel. It'll be hard to beat you, Jared, but we appreciate your time and we thank you. And also please everyone remember about his interview with Mike that he just promoted. So be on thank you all very much for joining us. All right, have a great Monday, everyone.